So, willkommen zurück. Ich stehe vor einem sehr, sehr bekannten Laden, das Alcus von 1966. Da gibt es die besten Falafel in Amman, in Jordanien. Und heute ein neues Video, spezielle Tour. Wir lassen mal das Auto vorbeifahren. Ähm, wir machen die Street Art Graffiti Tour. Amman und speziell Jordanien ist bekannt für Street Art Kunst. Und die gucken wir uns heute mit Aladdin einem der Initiatoren dieser ganzen Geschichte, dieser Tour und auch dieser Street Art Kunst. Mit ihm zusammen machen wir heute eine Tour und gucken uns die bedeutendsten Graffitis in Naman an. Viel Spaß, ich nehme euch mit. Ja, yeah, so this beautiful piece was painted uh, one week before the lockdown started, Covid, uh, by Jordanian artist. His name is Yazan Mismar. And uh, Yazan, he painted this one for an environmental project called Amman Bil Akhdar. It's written inside the square in the middle. And Amman Bil Akhdar, it means Amman in the green. Yeah, or green Amman. So here they wanted to show that Amman will look more beautiful if it's more green and more clean. Yeah. So that's why they added some of Amman like famous locations like the columns from Citadel. Abdun Bridge in the middle in the white color, the Boulevard Towers in Abdali, the Arabic Kufi over there, and some of Amman houses like layers above each other because of the hills, and the Bedouin red carpets. Yeah, and all of that, the artist he mixes it with different leaves in different colors uh, to show Amman. Uh, more beautiful if it's more green and more clean. Yeah, this is the concept behind it. Uh, he called himself a Snarf. And Snarf, since the beginning of the genocide in Gaza, he started painting the watermelon in solidarity with Palestine. The watermelon became a symbol for Palestine Uh, because back in the 80s, the Israeli government banded the Palestinians to raise the Palestinian flag. So instead, people start raising the watermelons because it has the same colors as the Palestinian flag. And since then, it became a symbol for Palestine and solidarity with Palestine. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, just give me a little bit of time, I'll start waking up. <laughs> yeah, so this hill in front of us, it's called Jabal al Webde, and it's where we're heading to, yeah? So from here we'll go to downtown, then up to that mountain. So get ready for some exercise. And uh, you know, Jabal, the word Jabal, you will hear it here a lot, because Jabal, it means mountain. And Amman, historically, it was built on seven mountains, uh, which is the seven mountains surrounding the citadel. But of course, now the city expanded and there is more than 20 mountains now part of Amman. There is almost four million and a half people lives in Amman now. And if you see the big flag over there, uh, that flag was built in 2003 and it has the world record for the biggest flag pool uh, around the globe. But now it's number seven because other countries, you know, build bigger ones. But the flag pool is 126 meters and the flag itself, they change its size according to the wind. Like when it's more windy, they put the bigger flags. When it's less windy, they put the smaller flags. Cool? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about this piece behind the car. <laughs> We can move the car if you want. <coughs> Yeah, oh, watch out. Yeah, you can take a quick look. 
So this is a Miramid, yeah? You can see her tail here, and she's wearing a t-shirt with the skeleton of a fish, yeah? And this artist, he called himself Sardine, Sardine for the fish. Even his signature here in Arabic, uh, it's upside down, and from the bottom here, it looks like a fish, yeah? The signature here, Sardine, yeah? And usually when people come to our tour, at the end of the tour, they tell us that they start noticing things here in Amman. And one of the things you, you will find all around the city as well is the origami pot, the paper pot, because this is one of Sardine messages. Yeah, and he liked to spread it all around Amman. And yeah, one of his messages, he's questioning about where is the water and where is the sea in Amman. You want to come back again to the shed? Yeah, because, you know, Amman, long time ago, it used to have a lot of underground sources of water. But unfortunately, most of it dried because of the global warming. And some of it were blocked because of the constructions and buildings and also for some political reasons. So now Amman is a very poor city with water. And actually, Jordan is the second poorest country around the globe with the drinkable water. Yeah, so we have a big issue <laughs> with water. Uh, for example, the Dead Sea, the water level there, each year it, it, it goes one meter down. And according to the last study they did, they said now the, the Dead Sea has less than 30 years before it's totally gone. And that's why you'll find so many water tanks, like this white water tanks at the rooftops. Uh, because here the municipality, they provide the water just for one day a week. And we have to fill out these tanks and use it for the rest of the week, yeah, to reduce the amount of water. And if you run out of water, you have to order a private water truck, which is very expensive in comparison. Yeah, so that's why Sardine, he paint the paper posts to remind us about the water issue mainly. Also, he's a comic artist. So each character has a, its own story and background and Right. Yet. It's uh, by an artist, uh, they don't want to reveal themselves yet, so they're working on the concept. Uh, yeah, so I'll not tell you about it much, but it's a peacock or a chicken and the red balloons as well. Yeah, and allow me to tell you a little bit of uh, my story, <laughs> where I think my story is very similar to many of the street artists and hip-hop artists' stories here in Jordan, uh, because I'm actually one of the first gra graffiti writers, but I stopped doing graffiti uh, because I find myself more in dancing. So I became a professional dancer. I do breakdance, hip-hop, and contemporary. In, in my breakdance career, I won some big competitions worldwide, and also I joined big movies. Uh, the biggest movie I joined, it was Star Wars. Uh, yeah, because you know, Star Wars, the last one, The Rise of Skywalker, part of it was recorded here in Jordan. So I had the honor to work with them for one month in Wadi Rum. Uh, it was very difficult, <laughs> but it was a nice experience uh, because we were wearing like a big costume, alien. Uh, creatures and uh, you know what they're on is a little bit hot there and yeah in the movie you can't see my face because I'm an alien creature but you can find my name on the credits Alaeddin Rahmi so for me I come from uh, Palestinian roots my parents came from Palestine they were exiled two times uh, from Yaffa first in 1948 then they went to Haifa, and uh, from Haifa they came here in 1967. Uh, so I was born and raised in a Palestinian refugee camp here in Amman. So life was very difficult at the beginning, but uh, when I started growing up little by little, I was always looking for something creative, like something unique to do to change the atmosphere a little bit. So one day I was going back home after the school and my parents, they were watching the news 
and I used to avoid watching the news because it was uh, very heavy. That was in 2004 also, it was after the Iraqi war, Intifada and so many things. But uh, somehow in the news, they put the news about hip hop concert <laughs> in New York. And it was for head spin world record. Like who's gonna break the world record spinning on their head. So when I saw that, <laughs> it was something magical. Like I've never seen someone spinning on their head and the music, the colors behind them. So it really attracted me into it. But I had no idea like what was that. And after like seven months, there's a guy who came from Dubai to visit his family in our neighborhood and he used to do break dance. So he came to our neighborhood and he started showing me and all the kids like some break dance. He told us a little bit about it, uh, but he only stayed for one week. So we could not really learn from him. And before he left, he gave us a videotape for another hip hop concert. So we start watching this videotape like every day. All the kids in the neighborhood, we start trying to copy what we watch by ourselves. And this is why I usually say that you will find hip hop and street art here in Jordan are a little bit different than anywhere else. Yeah. Because at the beginning we interpret it in our way. We had our <laughs> terms for it and concepts. But uh, when the internet became more accessible, we start going to internet cafes and we start searching about it. Then we find out that this is something called hip hop. Yeah? Then we find out that hip hop is a culture and it has so many beautiful messages. And uh, the most important message in hip hop, we say peace, love, unity, having fun and it's all flying together with the music. Yeah? This is the main message. And also in hip hop culture, mainly there is five art forms or elements. Uh, the first element is the DJ, you know, the DJ who produces the music. Second element is the dancing, yeah, like break dance. Third element is beatbox, you know, when you make a beat. Sabah al khair, stuff like that. Fourth element is rap, you know, rap music. Do you know why they call it rap? Why it's R.E.P.? For rhythm and poetry. Rhythm and poetry. And the last element is graffiti. Yeah. And this is where most of street artists we were inspired by the original graffiti style, which is the tagging. Yeah, writing our names, signatures. Then we developed so many different styles. So now a man has so many beautiful street art pieces. Cool? Yes. I also, my parents are uh, conservative Muslims. Uh, my father, he's an imam, he's a prayer leader. And my mother, she wears niqab. And I have four sisters, they memorize by heart the Quran al Karim. Uh, and I do hip hop and street art, and I'm a professional dancer. Yes. Yeah? But to be honest, to make money and living out of art, some people they get lucky or they're very talented they become very famous and they make a lot of money uh, but of course not everyone so it depends <coughs> but i became an engineer and i worked as an engineer for seven years here and also in saudi arabia and dubai as well uh, but uh, five years ago i decided to quit and to follow my passion. So I started the tours and I started this initiative uh, to highlight the street art and art in general here. So here you can see the paper pots again. This is sardine and that's a robot that's sitting here on the steps, watching this nice view, holding the paper pots in its hand. And usually the robot, you will see different robots in the city. It's uh, usually to criticize that if you live your life without taking adventures, without being in touch with your emotions or being creative, you will become like a robot, like just going to work and coming back from work. But even the robot, if you notice its eye, it's uh, tearing. Yeah, so th even the robot, like they start having emotions. 
And the piece down there, this is by Palestinian artist. His name is Naji Ali. He was called after a very famous uh, cartoonist, uh, Naji Ali, the original one. He has this uh, very famous character, it's called Handala. And where Handala, he's a kid, it represents himself because he was exiled from Palestine when he was 10 years old. And he said that this kid will never show or turn its face until it goes back to Palestine. So that's why it's standing uh, with the back only. So the new Naji Ali, uh, he's following the same steps, kind of. He's painting this lemon with cat eyes, and it's from the future. And he called it uh, lemon back. And lemon back, uh, he means, because in Palestine there is a lot of lemon trees and sea trees, uh, so he's talking about the right of Palestinians to get their lemon back, which is their land back. Yeah, because most of Palestinians, they used to be oh. farmers. Yeah. And this door here, it leads us to Sardine studio. This is the artist studio. This is where Sardine and other artists, sometimes they do exhibitions, galleries, workshops, and so many other stuff. It's a very beautiful space. And yeah, they call it Fada 317. Yeah, you can find it in social media. Just send them a message and you can come and visit the space. Cool? Nice. Yeah, it's in the business park. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It's really great. Do you go there? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's very beautiful. Now they have so many like local shops and they give you free taste and stuff like that. You can have so much food. They have uh, live music. It's very, very beautiful. Highly recommended if you have time. Yeah, so here we'll talk about this, this poem. This is an Arabic poem and it's by one of the greatest poets in the history. Uh, his name is Al-Mutanabbi. Al-Mutanabbi uh, is from Iraq from 1,100 years before. So this is how old this poetry is. And from this one, there is very famous verse that everyone knows it. But uh, it's unfortunately kind of dismotivating speech. And you know, most of the time people use it in a negative way. And that verse, it says that not everything you want, you will get it because the wind doesn't blow as the ship desires. Yeah, so it's like saying life doesn't always go the way you want. But because people here, they overuse it. So it became very neg negative. You know, when like you're motivated to do something, someone will come and say, the wind doesn't blow as your ship wants, so khalas, give up, forget about it. So recently another artist came and reversed it in a very motivating way. And this one became very popular. People love the energy that it gives. Finally, someone is motivating them. And the artist is unknown. And I think they kept themselves unknown out of respect for the Mutanabbi. Yeah. Of course, like to respect the best. Yeah. But also you have to keep creating. Yeah. <coughs> so now the verse one, it says, the wind will blow as our ship desires because we are the wind and we are the sea and we are the ship. So if you wanted something by your strength, you will get it. Even if humans and genies fighted you for. So always aim to the summit of things and you will get it. The wind will blow as our ship wants. Yeah, that's the reverse. In Arabic, so you can hear it in Arabic. تَجْرِ الْرِيَاحُ كَمَا تَجْرِي سَفِينَتُنَا نَحْنُ الْرِيَاحُ وَنَحْنُ الْبَحْرُ وَالسُّفُنُ إِنَّ الَّذِي يَرْتَجِي شَيْئًا بِهِمَّتِهِ يَلْقَاهُ لَوْ حَارَبَتْهُ الْإِنْسُ وَالْجِنُّ فَاقْصِدْ إِلَى قِمَمِ الْأَشْيَاءِ تُدْرِكُهَا تَجْرِ الْرِيَاحُ كَمَا رَادَتْ لَهَا السُّفُنُ yeah, Because again, the police caught him in the street while he was painting and they took him to the police station for vandalism. Um, but when he went there, he did not give up. 
he actually offered the police officers that he will paint something for them inside the police station in exchange of to let him out. And they actually agreed. So he painted big, beautiful beast that was in the second circle police station and they let him out. Uh, but what's funny <laughs> that when other police officers saw that piece, they start contacting street artists to go to the other police stations to do street art. And this is part of the story of how we melted the ice between us and the government. So now street art became as a legal art here in Jordan. So painting small pieces like this, you don't need permission, except you have to ask the owner. Yeah? On the wall? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And if it's a big piece, like building size, you need permission from the municipality. Yeah? And also we have the three taboos or the three red lines that we cannot cross. It's not official rules, but everyone knows it. Yeah. So <clears throat> number one, if we ban something that disagree with the government or the government decision or mentioning specific people from the government, uh, this is not accepted. We can talk about a lot of political subjects, you will see. Uh, but uh, some subjects, if they're going to make a fuzz, this is not accepted. Uh, <clears throat> number two is religion. You know, religion is a very sensitive subject to talk about here. And number three is sexuality. Mm -hmm. Like painting naked human body or people kissing. Uh, anything has to do with se sexuality is not accepted. LGBTQ and etc. Cool. And here you can see the original graffiti style, the tagging, uh, MD, MD, MD. This is a graffiti crew from Germany and Jordan. They're collaborating together. And it's a shortcut for mad dogs. Yeah, this is what they call their crew. And for the street art murals here, uh, they were painted in 2018 as part of a street art festival. It's called Baladak Festival. Yeah, Baladak, it means your country. And every year in this festival, they bring artists from all around the globe to paint here in Jordan. <clears throat> yeah, so the first one here was painted by an artist from Serbia. Uh, her name is Nadia. And Nadia, she called this piece the Blue Boy. Yeah, as well talking about uh, the refugee kids and their struggles. Because usually blue color in art, it represents sadness. Yeah, you know, this is when, uh, for example, Picasso, uh, when he started painting in a blue color, he was in a sad time. So people consider it as sad color. And also because street art is in the street, so anything can change it. And when the artist painted this one, there was some cracks on the wall and the municipality came to fix it. But now, it looks like they cover the kid mouth, yeah? And the two holes beneath his eyes looks like tears, yeah? So it became more sad with time. How long, like, their, um, like... It takes to bend? Like, I mean, it stays forever, or they will change... Oh, uh, it will change one day. A Jordanian artist, uh, his name is Abdullah. Uh, he called himself Dan Dan. 
Uh, this is his first mural in the street, actually. He's a young artist. It looks like Japanese. Anime. Yeah. Many, yeah. Many pieces you see. We kind of influenced by Japanese anime and manga. So here it's a concept from the Greek methodology uh, talking about uh, social pressure. That's why like people create different masks for different occasions and hiding their true personality, the kids inside us. Yeah. It's very well known steps and also it has so many street art we we'll come to it and this nice cafe here it's called Jadal for knowledge and culture so it's a cultural place where they do a lot of social activities events and etc let's just check it out then we keep going <laughs> yeah, so here in Jadal, uh, when you come here and you order, you don't pay for the drinks, but instead you pay for the time. Yeah, so how many hours you spend here, this is how much you pay. And they call it the anti cafe system. So especially for students, people who want to work for very long hours. It's like in, working, like yeah, if you want to like be in an event, a concert, music concert. So this is a strong statement in Arabic. It's by a Jordanian artist, he called himself Huawei. And uh, in Arabic, even if you speak Arabic, you will not be able to read it. Just uh, not to have an issue with the police or something like that. Uh, because in Arabic it says Ibadah. Uh, Ibadah, it means genocide. So he's describing what's happening in Gaza. And this is Gaza city here and there. It's like burning, yeah, with this brown color because of the air strikes and the bombings. Yeah, so please don't tell the police about it. <laughs> And here there's a huge gallery. It's actually, yeah, it's their annual vacation this month. Mm. So next month. I discovered it yesterday. Yeah. It's very beautiful, but it's closed. I love this one. Yeah, because this one, it's made out of Arabic calligraphy. So if you notice, there is a lot of Arabic letters and words on this one. And the dress she's wearing, this is the Sarkisian wedding dress. Yeah, it's a contribution for what uh, the Sarkisian have done to Jordan. Uh, they played very important role in building this country. And it's by an artist from Lebanon. Uh, his name is Yazan Halawani. And this is for women empowerment in the Palestinian resistance.
Do you know Bed City? No? Uh, Bed City here, uh, the second floor. It's the name or it's Bed City? <laughs> no, no, it's the name of the place. It means ah. my grandmother house. Mm -hmm. okay. So she's like, is it my, no, not my grandmother, their grandmother. Uh, here they teach cooking classes. If you're interested to learn how to make uh, traditional food by your hand, then try it. This is one of the highly recommended experiences in Amman because they are two sisters who are trying to keep their grandmother recipes. So now they teach it for people. And this is their grandmother house, actually. Yeah. Go up here. Is it always calm here or there is a, like the afternoon there is a lot of people eat or it's always calm? Uh, no, because it's Friday. Ah, eh. Salat al mm. ah, so we will go to pray. Oh. After pray, we'll see more people in the street. It's the weekend. Yeah, so you can see the lemon guy again. This time it's a strawberry. This is the new upgrade for it. And we used to go to this colorful house. We used to call it House of Dreaming. It was a, a beautiful space for the artists to share our dreams. So we painted everything inside. It was a hub for the street artists, musicians, uh, any art form we used to go there. Uh, but unfortunately, they closed the space uh, for financial issues. Uh, the owner asked for more rent after it became successful. So they had to shut down the place. We used to go there and finish the tours upstairs. Uh, but now we finish the tours here. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, if you have any questions.